know. What's up everybody? I'm Mika Simone here for Comedy Hype for another episode of Welcome to My House. We're down here in Studio City at Penn's Bowling Alley yeah. with, I mean, um, somebody that I've just grown up with him. We've watched him grow up from a child to an adult. He's been in the business for a very long time. You guys, please give it I have, Why do I want to say give it up? Yeah, yeah, I'm clapping. I ain't mad at Oh my goodness. Go clap, go clap for a minute. Go clap for a minute. Round of applause. Thanks for sitting with us. Not a problem, not a problem. Season five of Family Time, I see you guys. Yes, season. indeed. Yes, indeed. When I walk away, you'll see the season five. I'm on the back. telling you. It's on the back. <laughs> yeah, five seasons, man. It's been, a, it's been a ride, man. Not a lot of people get to five. So right. Go. Is this year the year that marks 25 years in the business for you? Uh, it's funny. He came up with that slogan, I guess, because it's a round number, but I will be 41 this year. I started when I was nine. Let's do some quick math real quick. It's more than 20. Yeah, it is. Way more. <laughs> Most people get to retire after about 30 years. Uh -huh. That's not the line of work. I mean. No. You know what I mean? We work until we till we go home. You feel me? And then it's just up to us to decide how much we work and how much you have to work, how much you love it so that you do it, you know. And it's all I've known, you know, period. So I mean, I was looking through your, your catalog. Mm. You've done, I mean, as far back as Webster. I don't know. Put that up. <laughs> Webster was dope. Webster, Webster was in a, uh, that was a memorable moment for me um, in the auditioning process. Okay. Uh, you know, I'm, I brought up to 25 years or something, and it's funny because it's kind of like my warm up for what I talk about out in uh, Dallas. Um, but yeah, man, I loved auditioning as a kid. Oh, I loved it because th th I'm very competitive. Mm -hmm. So I'd walk into the room and be like, nah, he ain't gonna get it. Oh, hey, let me, hold on, let me see. <laughs> nah, that ain't. I know what I'm going. I go in the bathroom and get myself right. And I always try to think of something creative. Think outside the box. Okay. What will make you stand out? What will the producers and directors say? Oh, that guy right there. One thing is uh, to be last because it's always. <laughs> That's not why I'm always late. But uh, did we see everyone? No, Omar's here. I'll take Omar in. Oh, that last guy was great. You know what I mean? No. <laughs> That's one little trick of the track. Right. right. I don't recommend being late all the time. Uh, but you get them to reschedule, then you just write it late. No, 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 no. But anyway, so for this one, it was uh, I had to play an announcer, um, and it starts off. The line starts off, and now, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Sammy Club for blah 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 blah. Uh -huh. And uh, we figured out a little gimmick, something to do. And I said, okay. So I remember I was sitting, had my little coat on, and I'm waiting, and I'm like, goodness gracious, I had to be. I, I wasn't 12 years old at all. I had to be around 10, maybe 11 years old. Yeah. So I remember I was sitting and I was waiting. I was like, all right, homework with these next. Boom, boom, I come in. Like, How you doing? Hi, hi, nice to see you, nice to see you. He's like, you ready? Yeah, okay. And I open up my coat and I pull out a mic and the cord hits the floor. And I said, and now, ladies and gentlemen, the whole room went, oh my goodness. And it didn't matter how well I read. They were just like, that was clever, that was quick. And I booked it. And I always remember, you got to think outside of, I don't recommend always bringing in your own props, but it worked for that. And then being a little cute little kid, whatever, going, and now, ladies and gentlemen, right. you know, and it's, you know, my mom always said, smile when you make them listen. You know, smile so when you make them listen. Always smile. Everything, I just, I'm like, you got a great smile. Like, I've been doing it a long time. So, <laughs> soon as I smile, and I said, that's the check, and it got a little bright, and I said, okay, I'm always, always smiling. So, what so, would you attribute, you know, to your, your longevity? No, I mean, that's a tough one. I mean, it's a lot of things. Uh, a praying mother. Um, mm. The the it definitely is in me. It's it's nothing that was was just taught. I mean, my brother, um, and not to you know knock him in any way, love him to death. You know, he he had classes. He went. He knew this is what he wanted to be. So he studied his craft. He honed it. Oscar. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Me, it kind of fell into my lap in the sense of it was two strange things that happened. I was watching Star Search, and they had a section of Star Search called Star Search Kids. Oh, yeah. And I, yeah. it was just like that. I remember watching at home going, huh. And it was two little kids sitting at a table just like this, and they were just reading their little lines. And, then, mm -hmm. and I was like, and next. And I remember going, that looks kind of easy. Strangest thing. A week or two later, I'm just picking up a script from my brother at Corley Junior Agency, which was his agent. Okay. And then became my agent because I walked in, I got the script, and she said, oh, hey, get over Oh, so fast. Oh, you look great. What's your name? Omar. I'm like, Omar, smile away. He's like, oh, what a great smile, you know. And uh, she said, you ever thought about being in a business? 
I'm like, what business? You know, that being an actor, going out and I was like, I don't know. He's like, I think you, you can make it. You know, I'm like, I just met this woman like right, three right. seconds. And I went home and I begged and I begged and my mom finally said, fine, well, you, you can try it. And I went on two auditions the very first day. Uh, and the first one was scared the hell out of me while well, it was high rise building, a bunch of people, mm -hmm. super nervous, didn't get it. And the next, uh, next audition, maybe an hour later, we get there, it's a bunch of kids, we're out throwing them football around, really just being comfortable and whatnot. And uh, I went in there and I booked it, you know. So it was like, damn, most people get the audition, audition, and finally get their break. But for me, it was like, oh, okay, I, there's something to this. Mm -hmm. And, you know, my brother always told me, make sure it's fun for you, you know what I mean? Because you're young, you can do anything you want. This is the career I've chosen. It's for you. If you're a kid, you can do whatever you want. So don't keep doing this if you think it's work or we need the money or anything like that, bro. So I was just like, all right, all right. as long as I have fun, then cool. It's been a blast. It's been a blast. You, I mean, you come from an entertainment family. Both your mm -hmm. parents mm -hmm. were in the music business, of course. Music, exactly. <laughs> it's so funny. My dad always was like, I don't know how you make your, those faces. And he goes, mm -hmm. <laughs> really dramatic look. He's like, your eyes look like that. I'm like, I don't look like that. <laughs> but to me, it's always been natural. You know, people see me and they go, when they meet me and talk to me, they're like, yeah. man, that's how you are in real life. You get paid to do what you normally do, like smart right. guy, all those looks and stuff I do. Like, yeah, I'm, you see my hands moving. This is right. just how this I am. Theory. This I is how it. I, you know. So I, sometimes I have to reel it in, you know. I mean, when I start doing movies and stuff, not like John Singleton, the Baby Boy. I don't know if I'm skipping ahead. I don't know what no. questions you have lined up. But <laughs> well, with Baby Boy, he had to bring it in. He had to, you know. He gave. He called me. He said, "I saw a film you did. Okay. Uh, called Freedom Song. I had like seven lines in the movie, but it was about the sit-ins in Mississippi. Yeah. And we were at the lunch counter, and we just, you know, I had a serious look on my face as he told it. And he said, "I saw that look and knew you would be right for Sweet Bee and Baby Boy." I'm like, Sweet Bee, huh? Why don't I give it a read? He's like, Yeah, brother, hit the gym, and I'm gonna be out there in three months, right? So. I read the script, blew my mind. I immediately shaved my head. I was just like, okay, hold on, let's get this right. I gotta and get, yeah. yeah, I gotta get ready for this. And you know, the audition, I walked in, I'm fired up, throwing chairs around, and I'm, you know, and I was amped up, and then I left, and he was just he was just kinda like, all right, thanks for coming in. I mean, first thing he said was, you look great. Good job, you hit the gym, good job, good job. All right, let's read this thing. We read it, and I was all, you know, amped, and going over the top with it, and he was like, all right, all right, nice to meet you. A month went by. A month ago. Right, right. I was just like, well, there goes that. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. And I got a call out the blue and it blew my mind. I said, wow. But when I got on set, it was really, I had to start over. You know what I mean? And I thought the character was here. Mm -hmm. And they were like, you got it, but bring it all in, internalize all of that. You sit there looking all crazy at people, gangsters don't have to do all that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yelling and all this stuff. Stop yelling. Bring it, bring it down. Mm -hmm. If you can yell by talking just in one tone, then you got it. But you hollering, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So I had to really just reel it in. And every scene, it was like I was, it was just ready to explode. And it was dope. It was the first scene that we shot for the whole film. Uh, you know, John Singleton said, okay, this is it. This is the one. I need you to bring it all mm -hmm. the way. Jump up and down. Do some push-ups. Whatever you got to do, I want you fired up. And it was the scene where we were in the uh, garage, and I said, I need to get saved. Right, you right. You know what I mean? And you see, it looked like my heart's pumping. It was. Right, I was, right. <laughs> like, Four. Three, two, and action. You stand up. I'm like, <clears throat> you know, I still was, you know, breathing heavy. And I kind of used that going forward in my career. I was just like being fired up before I started my career. You know, I, th there's always a saying that, you know, to make it in the business, you either have to know someone, mm. you have to work your ass off, mm. or you have to have that family tie already in there. Mm. And I think a lot of us have it mistaken. I mean, at least for me, and I know it's of ignorance that <clears throat> when we saw Cuba Gooding, mm -hmm. it was like, okay, cool. And then I felt like then I started to see some Omar, you mm. know what I mean? Right, right. For me. Right. And, and it was like, oh, well, shoot, they're all in the same family. So it <laughs> must have just been automatic. Yeah. But I was reading somewhere that there was a time in life that, like, home, y'all weren't even homeless at some point. Very homeless, yeah. We were, uh, we started on the road, um, let's see, I was probably around eight, and we had lived, you know, we, my, my parents, I mean, it was <laughs> gonna be a long answer here. Uh, it started, you know, my, my father, Cuba Gooding, senior singer, my mm -hmm. mother, singer, they got together and my mother decided to shelve her career mm -hmm. by shelf, I mean quit, yeah. and raise the family. Okay, so, you know, and in the era that my dad uh, had his most fame, yeah, RCA, uh, <laughs> a lot of those deals weren't exactly, right. you know what I mean? Like, people weren't as business-minded as they are now by trial and error. I learned a lot from him, yes. you know what I mean? 
So the money didn't last. Okay, and then when it when it ran out and you don't know how to manage money and you're not used to money and how it went, that happens. So the only thing my father knew was to go get the money. Mm -hmm. So go get the money didn't mean pack up his family and go with him. It meant I'll see you in a minute, I'll be back to get mm -hmm. the money. Which ultimately led to their divorce. But my mother wasn't just gonna sit on her hands and wait. Now my brother had ambition, he had a goal. It wasn't gonna happen where we were living at the time, which was in the high desert. Okay. So she had to move. You know what I mean? Um, she got in the car and loaded us up with a dog, a Great Dane. Not just a dog, a Great Dane. <laughs> yeah. My sister April, my brother Cuba, myself, a Great Dane, and my mother Shirley, and we hit the road to Hollywood. It was a long journey. I mean, it was a couple years. We went through Orange County. We stayed at some, you know, she's always been a Christian, so she, you know, we stayed at a couple of Christian homes, mm -hmm. type of thing, shelters and whatnot. She landed a job at, uh, Broadway, we were able to get an apartment on uh, in uh, Toluca Lake, uh, and the whole thing with her was, you know, my brother was like, like his father, all right, I got to go, you know, I can't yeah. stay here with you guys, I got to go out and do my thing and make my way, so he left, so I'm now the man of the, ha man of the family at 10, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, so she prayed into existence my first regular role, which led to her being able to quit the job and get up off of her feet, so I ain't got to rub her feet every night. Say it. Okay. <laughs> so she's standing in high heels. You see my mom, very classy, 72, looks 50-something, you know what I mean? But she always was very, she, very aware of her looks and how to, how to you know, handle herself, and she was an entertainer, so she, could, she managed my career on you know, integrity, putting God first, how to choose roles, how to not compromise. If you have talent, you shouldn't have to compromise. Okay. I mean, you touched on a lot of things about it's all who you know, and then there's, I mean, there's a lot of things you didn't say, like the casting couch and look, I'm a man, so I don't have to worry about mm -hmm. that. But I'm a black man in Hollywood, so I did see the differences, uh -huh. whether it was pay, whether it was the opportunities as an actor, you know, and then the writer's strike happens, and then the black like Hollywood almost completely disappeared, you know, and in the middle of that, I'm just, I remember my roots and stick to stay in my lane. Mm -hmm. You know, I was like, oh, we can see you in all that. You should have been in this movie, that movie, this movie. No, no. I know my, I know my lane. You know what I mean? My brother half always offered me to play anything. Anything. Mm -hmm. If you can play anything, then so be it. I'm not saying I can't, but I don't think there's certain roles I know I wouldn't do justice. Okay. You'll never see me with lipstick on in the way, because I do not <laughs> For one, I'm just that type of brother. I, for one, it just ain't gonna happen. But two, but two, but two, I wouldn't do it. The lot was in there, mm, it's off me. All right, you gotta kiss him. Kiss who? Kiss him. Cut. I had his money. You know what I mean? That's just that's just me. You know what I mean? So I know my lane. Uh, I know what I can excel at. I know what I can do well. I know people say, oh, man, everything you do is dope. Yeah, yeah, because I know what I can do. Yeah. And then I just maximize on that. So, um. Did, did you, okay, going to a child actor, mm -hmm. to an adult, I mm -hmm. mean, you've, 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 you've yeah. mastered, come on, you've, you've right, been right. here this long. Right. Was it a hard transition? It's funny, there's, there's, there's uh, I guess there's a couple different ways that I can answer that. For one, growing up in sitcom, because the brief uh, overview was Wild and Crazy Kids, which mm -hmm. was a Nickelodeon show, three years. Immediately following that, I booked the presentation, which turned into a pilot, which turned into a series called Hang With Mr. Cooper that went for five seasons. And then one of the executive producers from that started a show called Smart Guy, mm -hmm. and then that ran for three seasons. And then got picked up by Disney and re-ran it. Right. So everybody thinks it got it went by like twelve seasons, but it was really only three seasons. Um, I thought it was like, <laughs> is that right? Like, oh, you guys did so many. You know, like back then you did you know 24, 25 episodes. Mm -hmm. right? like a season could be six episodes, you're, ten you're episodes, right. thirteen episodes. Um, and I got off topic again. You a transition. Ah yes. Yeah. So so when I started with uh, TV, like I would go out for roles for movies, mm -hmm. and you know. I could tell I did well. Like they, you know, I could see the, you know, you could tell if someone's just going thank you or that was yeah, great, yeah. or if they're just moved, you know, especially if they're doing one of these, you know what I mean? <laughs> and then it goes to nothing, you know, and, and you don't get the role, and you're like, what happened? And the agent's is like, hey, you know, it was between you and such and such, and they went with such and such. It happens so often that you realize, ah, they don't take you seriously, mm -hmm. even if they think you can perform. They go, okay. There's a lot of stuff people don't know that goes on behind you. Do your job, you're excellent. Okay, all right, yeah, he's excellent. However, I got this guy who's not as good, but he's got a rap out of mouth. Now let's put him in that role instead, and this and that and so forth and so on. Plus, da, 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 they don't respect it. They look, if we say we got Omar Gooding in this movie, they're gonna go, the guy from Henry, Mr. Cooper? Oh, no, no. He's funny, but how's he gonna pull this off? Right, you know what right. I mean? And that was the challenge until John Singleton. So when John Singleton 
cast me in Baby Boy, that was that that, that left. Now people say, Oh, Mark, oh, you mean not the yeah. people out there? Right, oh, yeah, let's bring him right. in. Let's, let's give him that role. Let's do that offer. So um, I always, you know, even in the low between movies, I would always go back to TV because it's just what I knew. Yeah, pilot season. People don't know pilot season happens every year. It's a few months, and you know all the shows. So you see a great show. Oh, it's a great show, and it's canceled. It's hard to get a show to last. Right. That's why we talk about five seasons, four seasons, however long it is. It's it's, it's a big accomplishment. Um, good shows, just for whatever, don't get the don't get the ratings. Right. And, you know they move on. So every pilot season. I would book something new, and I've done tons of shows. If you look at my stuff, I, like, I did Barbershop one season and gone, you know, and it was great, oh, it was funny, blah, blah, blah. People watching go, damn, what happened? I don't know, it's politics, somewhere yeah. around. Because they're not based on ratings per se. All they want you to do is buy Showtime. You buy Showtime, that's what they told us when we started. Mm. Once you buy Showtime or HBO or any show, that's it, we don't worry about ratings because they're going to buy it, whether they watch it or not. We don't wow. care. You're subscribed, you're, you know what I'm saying? So they said it had to be water cooler. That if people are okay. talking about it, that makes us want to renew it. So, um, so anyway, that was just one episode. That was one one incident. Another one called Miami Medical. That one went one season and done. Right. Why? That was a little deeper. It was some <laughs> behind the scenes stuff. I remember I came on set one day. Uh, I arrived on set and there was some guy that said, uh, "Did you hear what happened? Did you hear what happened?" I was like, no. The lead choked out one of the execs. And I was laughing. I'm going, "Why? Why is it? <laughs> we are canceled. Why are y'all laughing? Like you know." And, they put us on where, where new shows go to die, a Friday night. Uh, so, and that, the ratings were okay, but for CBS, no. And if no. they wanted us to succeed, succeed you know, we'd be on their back. So anyway, so, so, so it's tough, uh, but like I said, for longevity, you know, I think it's just staying busy, staying active. Looking pretty young helps. Uh, there, there's <laughs> there's, right. there's right. things. You got to take care of yourself, um, and you got to have the right attitude. You can't get too discouraged about this business, man. Cause a lot of people get rejected. A lot of people turn down stuff. My brother would talk to you about things. I said, they offered you that? You said, no. He said, yes, it was a mistake. But listen, <laughs> at the time, this and that. And I'm like, this okay, you know. Oh, wow. But, you know, so. You speak fondly of, of Cuba. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm sure big bro. Sometimes mm -hmm. we always have this sibling rivalry going on. Right, right, right. Being that y'all in the same you know, profession, right. was there any, like, maybe have y'all went for the same role? No, maybe never, any never, sibling never. Rivalry? Well, it's for one, what people don't know who says, oh, black and crack, I look the same age. That is my big brother. He is nine years older than right. me. It was his friends, and I'm the little brother going, can I go? Mm -hmm. No, all right, <laughs> then, you know, go on. You know what I mean? So, you know, once his career took off, and in mine, I was definitely TV, so it, it was hard to be on the same page on a lot of things. There was a few instances where it would backfire. For the most time, it was a plus. Okay. Most of the time, if I go in an audition room, and they're not sure who I am, and they go, Gooding, 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 Cuba, is there any relation? That's my brother. Are you kidding me? <laughs> oh! And I was like, a weight has been lifted. Now we're laughing. I love them from this. I love them. I'm like, that's great. Y'all ready to go? Boom. And you get the part. You know what I mean? So it's definitely been pluses, but there have been some, some, some negatives. I mean, Jerry Maguire, the way I heard it, I went in to read for his brother. Mm -hmm. I go, you know, a lot of times when you have agents, you just do what you do. You do you do your job, they have to do their job. Okay. So if I go in, if I leave an audition and I'm calling like, let me know when we start, because that went great. <laughs> the way they was reacting and responding, I know we booked that. Um, now I don't want to throw anybody under the bus, but from what I heard, it, it turned into politics. Because my brother had a role already, mm -hmm. whoever had the, the deciding factor of who gets the role of his brother okay. didn't want to be showing favoritism by hiring me. Mm. Not a knock on Aaron Spears. You did a great job. I mean, Aaron Spears, you did that. Yeah, However, you did that. <laughs> yeah. that could have been the first one. No. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, that that, dope, things. That would have been dope, you two being in that. That's oh, a great, big great. box office movie. Yeah, great, great. And it's like, you took that thought deeper than it had to be, as opposed to looking at me as just Omar Good and that's for what it was. Right, right. As opposed to Cuba's brother. It happened again. Um, more recently, uh, OJ. He went to play OJ and they brought me in for AJ. And they were like, oh man, I you know, had to have her when they did my thing. I mean, it was, you know, and again, Michael Jamal did excellent. But when I read, they left, they're like, man, good. Okay, all right, see you on set. Like, goodbye, thank you, you know what I mean? Yeah. And then they were just like, ah, the problem was you and your brother looked so much alike. We didn't want people to get distracted by that. And can you, I mean, you guys, if we style ourselves the same, yeah. we will just see it like this. Like, these guys look exactly this, and they both look the same. Just clean shaven with an afro, both were standing there, and we were like, damn, they're twins. So, you know, so 
that led to that. So there were a lot of those type of instances that happened. And people thought, oh, there's got to be beef. We don't see them together. We hang out sometimes. We go with goodings. When we have fun, we have fun. <laughs> and two of us in one room is a lot. So, you know, we hung out. And it's just like, all right, I'm going I'm to go. You just do you, and I'll see you tomorrow or Thanksgiving. So I don't know. So, you know, we're just definitely two, two different men, but it's, it's love like crazy. It's, you know, we do it. That's good. Other. That's good to hear. Mm -hmm. Again, talking about this catalog, I mean, mm. you've done so many, so many things. Ghost Dad mm. with Bill Cosby. Ghost Dad. <laughs> that, was a, that was another fun one. That was, was that a, your first time working with Bill? Absolutely. Man, I was nervous as heck, and he was cool as can be. Okay. You know, Cosby was a kid, so he was just like, hey. I was just like, hey. Oh, man. He made me comfortable. Oh, it was great. It was great. That was another interesting audition process. <laughs> this was a very interesting, I, it, it, this, was, this was crazy. I remember I went to audition and you know in the scene I faint and all this stuff. In the audition room they had me crawling under tables, peeking up out of stuff, and doing all these like you know techniques and all this. I mean I was in the room for like 45 minutes, which was just unheard of. And my sister oh, took in the audition. It was crazy how long I was in there. Okay. When I came out, my sister was like, so what happened? I was like, uh yeah, we had to do a lot. It was it was just a lot. It was a lot. And I told her about it and she was like, oh well, that's great. Went home and told my mother about it, who was my manager, mm -hmm. and she heard the whole story. It's like, oh, okay, well, we'll see what happens. And they were like, oh, you didn't get it. Mm -hmm. and, my, and my mother was like, huh, something must have been wrong there. Let me call down here and just, hey, how's it going? No worries, man. Just, you know, I want to find out the feedback and what was going on. And after a long conversation, uh, they brought me back in. <laughs> that mama conversation. I don't know what happened. <laughs> Exactly, you have to interview her. But hey, I was 10, okay? I just, you tell me to be there, I'll be there. So I, I went back in and I screen test for it, and the rest was history. But the on set stuff was uh, was amazing. Like I said, Bill Cosby was very, very, very cool. He was an awesome human being, uh, you know, very gracious. I didn't see you know, any of the, you always hear stories about how you mean to people, not, not to me. Okay. I had a ball. I mean, another, not downfall, but I think it's like a, like a bad thing are a part of growing up famous mm. is I know recently your father passed. Mm. You know, our deepest consult condolences. I was saying it's one thing, I mean, just to go through a death in our family period, mm. looking mm. forward to the broadcast. Yeah, that's tough. That's tough. It was it was a lot, man. I mean, you know, I've I've never really experienced grief like that. Um, where you think, oh I'm fine, I'm fine, and then you're not. Mm -hmm. So it was, it was like, if you ever been sick and then you, you, you like, you think you're all right and it, it kind of comes in waves, like grief, it just, it just, it comes, it comes, you don't know what will trigger it. One will say, somebody say something real simple and you'll be like, hmm, yeah. I need a moment, I need a moment, you know. So with him being famous, I mean, definitely with, you know, the paparazzi and all that type of stuff, people were real respectful. It was interesting. I mean, like, even when I was at my mother's house and <clears throat> my uh, fiance and child weren't with me at the time, so I called myself, come on get over to my mom's and when she showed up, I went outside. That was the first time I went outside. Porters were all running up and I just said, don't do it. And they were like, okay, we're going to You know, they, they, something they felt or whatever, but they were like, right. no, no, no. They were like, just one question or none of that. I was just like, don't do no. it. And they went, Brip, and then all ran the other way. So I was just like, I was good. So, and with him, you know, my, my, with me personally about it, it was dope in the sense that nothing was left unsaid between my father and at least me. I mean, he, if he has something on his mind, he'll tell you. Okay. Anybody, he, he does not mix words. He would not hold anything back. And he'd been extra reflective for the last year. He was here when my son was born. We held him, we yeah. talked and talked and talked and talked. And I was, I was really listening. Like, you know, sometimes you take advantage of like, oh man, it would be real tragic. Oh, I never got to say this, or we never got to do that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm said it all um, and we were able to talk we were really close like we were I think of his other kids he was all he, he would tell <laughs> you know what I mean they wouldn't say you my favorite <laughs> oh yes he, 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 he let me know that I was the closest to him in, in mentality like we really were like and you know he would give me a look and I go okay but I I watched him change I remember one point I was like this is the most stubborn man if we would try to talk about something they'd be like no just no then there came a time where I would talk and I would see him listening because if you say something, he'll look at you and listen. Just say yes, uh, and you know he's listening. Yeah. 
That is very important. If you want to get a point across to somebody, look them in their eyes, mm -hmm. and while they're talking, you be, okay, let's stop you right there. Is this what you meant? Because yeah. this is what it sounded like. It okay, meant. then? Okay, then let's go again. And that helps me, especially dealing with relationships. With my woman, absolutely. If we have a cover, I can see, okay, one of us is wrong. Let me figure out which one it is. Let me calm down first because I have a temper. <laughs> and yeah. then let me find out if it's me. And I'll go and I'll think, and I'll say, was it me? Damn it, it was. And then I'll come back and so listen, this is what it was. And these are things that were taught to me from my on how to listen, how to pay attention, how to think as people around you think. It sounds like a Godfather movie, but it's true. These Watching are, him grow. Him, yeah. And, and going, oh, why? And he learned, and I'm like, you know, he would say, do as I say, not as I do a lot, but eventually he started to do them as well. He would, mm -hmm. he would listen and he would say, well, son, I didn't think about it like that. Like, we, last few conversations we had blew my mind that he didn't know certain things about our family in regards to his wife in particular okay like he would oh she when i was gone i know she even said i wasn't this and i wasn't that and i was like mm, actually that's that's the difference you know it, it's kind of like if someone says oh man my mom would be pissing me off yeah your mom ain't nothing wait wait watch your mouth that's my mom right you know right, what i mean right right when my mom speaks and spoke about my dad was always positive to, to his children okay. always i mean there's anger moments of you may course. say something there, you may say some things, but at the end of the day, you know, respect your father, that's your father now, this and that. Let me tell you what kind of man I married, honey. And she'll go into her thing, you know what I mean? So I always had this bigger than life, but he, all, he kind of felt the need to try to have to explain his side of things. And I was like, thank you for that, but you really didn't need to. She, you know, she kept it 100. She may argue with them, and they always argue. They did a lot of arguing with each other. Uh -huh. But then you turn around and be like, hey, your mother's something else. Oh, yeah, your daddy's a, you know what I mean? I'd be like, like this, hmm, that's interesting, you know, but it was never bashing. Um, but he was, you know, again, it was it was a lot of crying, it was a lot of grief. It was it it was sudden to to the extent that he always said he'd live forever. <laughs> you know, wow. so in that sense, he was like this, hmm. he goes, I'm not going nowhere no time soon. And you really but internalize that. I have eyes. Yeah. I could see things and go, hmm, what's wrong with your leg? You're like, oh, we gonna ask you about my leg. That's messed up. We laugh and then we just move on. And I kinda, you know, and he knew, it's funny, the same thing he did, my grandfather, my mother's father did, uh, my grandmother passed, and then less than a year later, my grandfather went around the country and visited all of his kids. And by the time he got back home, he passed. So the odd thing about my dad is he, his parent, his dad is from Barbados. Okay. And where was he a week before he died? And didn't tell us. He just went back, went to Barbados, saw some people, did some things, and then came home, and then, and then he passed. Wow. And it was like, huh. But again, we had a lot of conversations. We, you know, phone rang all the time. Yes, Dad. Hello, what's going on? Yes. Uh huh. And he would tell <laughs> you, it's like you try to get your word in. If not, just take it, take it. You know, I had conversations with my sister, we talked about it all the time, I remember years back. My mom called me one time, your sister's acting crazy, call your sister. I don't know when I called, I said, mm, relax, that's our mother, we don't know how long she's here, just take it, <laughs> just <laughs> listen, whatever, if it's wrong, whatever, call me and we'll talk it out. Yeah. But don't give that back to her, let her, let her do it. If she's wrong, she's wrong, so be it. At this that's point, just it, you know what I mean? Age, right, at this point in their age, she's good. Yeah, but no. Now know. she's eating superfoods and kale and whoopty whoom, she look like she's my little sister. Like, Who is that? <laughs> your mother? I'm like, oh my goodness, so she, she knows. So it's a, no, but it's good. God is good. He, he, uh, we, we sent our father home. Uh, we went back to Harlem, where he was born, a couple, couple blocks from the Apollo. So we had the memorial services there. Wow. We did a procession through Harlem, and he's in the mausoleum, and it was not cheap. <laughs> uh, I'm not even trying to let you talk it back. It wasn't cheap at all. But it was. <laughs> Being honest, that went out and stopped. All right. So mom said, I asked what your daddy wanted. And I said, he gets whatever he wants. When it comes to great sitcoms, mm. you've been a part of many. Mm -hmm. what, do you, what does it take mm. to get season after season? That's interesting. Um, definitely the writing. It's, it's, it, it's the writing and the cast, man. I mean, you know, it sounds like, well, duh. But I don't know, because I've, I've seen shows I've been a part of shows that you think they'll run forever. Mm -hmm. And then the ones that actually do have a good run, um, the cast is very compatible. They're loved. See, 
the dope, the funnest thing about family yeah, time is that it's really a family, <laughs> really a family, uh, not just a show, but on set. Bentley Collins hires everyone in his family to work on the set. Okay. <laughs> his wife does the set dressing. His nephew is the first AD. His son is one of the stars of the show. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then the cast on there. So we've known each other for five years. Um, so it's a well-oiled machine. You know, we do a lot of work in a short amount of time. Um, but we, we all put input on everything. Okay. You know, we do a take and get on. Oh, one of the grips walk over, you should say this. Oh yeah, I'm gonna try that. Okay, now, action, and we do it and everybody laughs. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So the energy is good. Um, the writing is fun. We bring in strong uh, stand-up comics as well, okay. and uh, not just as guest spots. We got a couple of them that are writers, right. punch-up writers that help out too. Uh, I also write on the show as well, and one of the producers. So it was fun. I got a, I had a script uh, that I submitted in the, you know mm -hmm. for episode uh, six of season five, um, and it was fun, man, going through that process because I always been a writer. I you know I do music as well. That'll be yes. in the next interview. We'll get into that next time. Uh, but, you know, to watch the process of breaking these scenes down, I've read, I've read tons of scripts. Yeah. I've read, you know, he's like, ooh, but to actually piece one together and watch the process and all oh, that joke works, this doesn't, it was fun, man. It's a great journey. But, but it's, um, it's a lot of fun. We just, we really focus on being funny, not just like, okay, a couple of scenes that aren't that funny and then there's one big laugh at the end. But every scene, you're going to chuckle. Yeah. At least throughout, <laughs> throughout, um, and we focus on that. Like if there's if there's a scene goes by, nobody really laughs. We just, what can we do to punch this up a little? Yeah. Bit? What do we do to get the energy up? You know what I mean? Um, and then we also try to make a statement. Uh, you know, via whatever type of lesson we can learn about family, conquering what's trending, conquering what the world, whatever it about. is. You know, but even if it's to learn know. to listen when you're talking to your wife or uh -huh. your husband or your kids or what they're trying, they'll tell you what it is. Just listen, pay attention and learn to communicate better. Um, and it's funny, a lot of the shows are written around Bentley's actual life. You know, right. so he has, he has him and his wife, and he's got a son and a daughter, and that's, you know, what okay. the show is. And then we'll do a scene, like we had one scene where Tony and Lisa were playing dominoes at, uh, at the kitchen table with, with coffee. Now, I'm, I love dominoes, like, period. Like, I'm a beast. Yes. <laughs> uh, no, no, I've got belt strokes, all that stuff. So, when I was doing the scene, I was like this. All right, bro, this ain't realistic. Don't nobody play dominoes and drink coffee. And he was like, excuse me? Val, he called his wife over and said, what were we doing this morning before we left? She said, playing dominoes. I would not let him leave. We had to do one more game, one more game. And it was early this morning. I was just like, never mind. And actually, you know, so, so he makes it, he makes it, you know, we'll pitch something. And it kind of be like, you can see him going, would I do that? Yeah, that, that's true. That, that'll happen. So, um, so yeah, man, it's a, it's, it's a joy to work on that show. It's, it's family. Plus, I work with my homegirl, Angel. So, uh, she makes it fun because we're, 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 Real close, like we right. we can look and go. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We we'll talk about it later. Like, well, you know, we don't have to go. What the heck was that? Or hold oh, no, on, I'm confused. You know, so it's good to work with friends, and I bring my friends on set, and it's, it makes it fun, man. It doesn't feel like work, right? So it goes back to the first lesson I learned: make sure you're always having fun. If not, get out of it. Season five, what are we looking? What, what are we looking to expect? Uh, season five, a lot more laughs, a couple surprises. We have a couple of great guests. I don't want to give away everybody. Uh, let's see, we have Caesar on there. Uh, yeah. It's people you wouldn't expect. Greece, tomato, tomato, tomato. You. <laughs> oh man. Um, uh, uh, John Brown. Who else? We we had. Uh, oh, we had Tiny on there. It was crazy. Oh wow. She did good. It was fun. Uh, yeah, a lot of stuff like that where you would just be like, who, what? Oh man. So, you know, Kumo D. All right, let me stop. It, it was fun. A lot of some stuff. great cameos coming. Great cameos coming through. Uh, some good storylines, and uh, it was it was fun. A lot of smiles. A lot of laughs. I know you're working with, with, with Angel Cromwell, that's your, your, mm -hmm. your baby boy girlfriend. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For the culture, do you think we can get a baby boy too? No. <laughs> and that's it. See you later. I don't know. No. No, no. It, 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 I don't know. Who knows? You never, you, you never know. You never know. I don't, I don't think they will. But I mean, I, I think we'd all do it. Sure. Okay. Sure. I saw the poster and there's one that's like, Snoop and Ving Rhames and everybody's on. I was like, first of all, Snoop died. Uh, <laughs> Ving Rhames old as hell. Uh, no, no. And I love Ving. And shout out to Ving. We worked together on another project too. And he's awesome. He's one of my favorite people to work with. Well, I appreciate you. Thank you. Sitting with us and giving us all the good on the good in life. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yes, ma um, continue. Congratulations. Continued success coming your way. You. And I just appreciate you. I appreciate you. Okay.